I'll tell this for you too. Uh, you know, you have these guys, you know, and, and such an impact of the team and the program and everything they've done. How tough is this night to finally say goodbye and then see? No, it's not tough at all. Um, you, you're referring to the seniors, you mean? Yes, yeah. Uh, not at all. You know, it's a celebration. I think mean, you get used to the evolution uh, of guys graduating, and I, I think that uh, they, uh, they, they need it as well. They, you can only take so much from the same coaching staff. But in all seriousness, sure, it's, I mean, you're sad to see guys go, but it's, just, it's part of it, and it's their time. It's time to go for, uh, for Jackson Bart, Gary Clark, and Kyle for sure. Uh, and, you know, in Kyle's case, it's five years of college. Uh, so it's time for them to move on to another phase of their life. But uh, I think tonight's, not, uh, you're not sad to see them go. Tonight's about appreciating that they were here and celebrate what they did while they were here. So uh, when you talk about Gary and Kyle, you're talking about guys, they combined for 61 wins in two years. It's never been done in the history of our program. Uh, you know, and then obviously Gary's had just an unbelievable career. So uh, tonight's more about celebration. Uh, and, and I think what people don't realize in coaching, you know, it, it never ends. Uh, I talked to Farad Cobb yesterday, um, and he's in Brazil. <laughs> so, you know, it just never ends for us. Uh, I'm talking to Marcus Sykes today about his coaching career. So uh, for the fans, they're sad because Gary and Kyle are gone. But uh, for me, they'll, you know, they'll, I go from their coach to their friend now. So our relationship will just change. Uh, it, it, it goes from coach to to friend, and I, I, that's something I share with them. Uh, but uh, I'd rather be coaching them. <laughs> Speaking of change, how much through the season did you see the mentality and the work ethic from, from your, le your leaders and seniors rub off once we were done towards the end of the season? Um, well, I think over time, you know, G Gary has a, had a tremendous impact on the guys around him um, in his humility. I think that. Uh, our team took on a personality where you didn't see us with a lot of bravado celebrations. We were a workmanlike team, and we took on the personality of our best player. And I think Kyle, uh, his, what he did was he was the energizer. He's an energy giver, and he was the energizer for our team. And to, to win the, the number of games that we won, it's extremely hard to do. Uh, and you have to come all the time ready for team's best shots, ready for crazy things to happen. And you have to always have energy. And that's where Kyle was really valuable to our team. So they'll be talked about a lot now that they're gone to uh, why we won and the things that they brought to our team, to our younger players. You had uh, three weeks to process the season, the way it ended. What's your thought now? how things did end. Oh, I'll never get over that. You know, see, my, my responsibility to, uh, is different than most coaches. You know, very few people are coaching uh, at their alma mater and in their hometown and grew up a Bearcat fan uh, where their father was a, a varsity letter winner and their mother grew up on campus. So my responsibility uh, and the weight of that is on, on me is, is I can't possibly express it to you of how, how much I, I bear that burden uh, of trying to get our team back to a Final Four. Uh, but uh, you just got to move on. I think that, that, you know, there's, you never get over it. I'll never get over it. Uh, but you got to understand that the difference between me and other people is I still haven't gotten over the UCLA loss in the NCAA tournament or the St. Joe's loss. So uh, you just try to learn from things and get back to work. And you have to use it to motivate, uh, motivate yourself because we're in a competitive business. And if you stand still in our business, people are running past you, uh, especially with springtime, with the recruiting the way it is nowadays. Uh, but uh, trust me, no, nobody wants to win in March more than me and understands the importance of it uh, and the magnitude of it, what it does. And nobody wants to deliver that to their school more than I do. And you have guys coaching uh, at schools that they didn't attend and places where they didn't grow up. So, they can't possibly, uh, they may want it as much, but I can, probably, I can promise you nobody wants to win that game in uh, six games in a row in March more than I do. Jacob announced after the season that he's going to put his name and test the NBA draft waters. Um, I don't know if he's been available since then, but where, how do you... Well, I've talked to him quite a bit. Is he potentially coming back or is this... 
Uh, it's a daily process. I think, you know, first of all, he, he needs to, in the, the way the scope of the NBA draft is now, uh, and the mindset of young people, uh, and the, the money that's involved, all that factored in, uh, I think he needs to test it. There's a lot of kids testing it that shouldn't be testing it. Jacob's going to play in the NBA. The question is when and where, uh, and is he ready to play? And, and the decisions that he has to make uh, are his. Our job is to support him. So he knows uh, guys have come and gone in our program, and we're gonna do everything we can to continue to win. When it comes to individuals, uh, it's our job to help them. So uh, I'm not his adversary in this. I'm trying to get him to come back to school. I'm, I'm just trying to help him in any way I can help him. It, and it's tough when you're a young person and uh, I don't have the answer for him. He has to explore it. So part of his exploration is put his name in. Second part will be work out for some teams. Hopefully he gets invited to Chicago. And then he can kind of see through that two things. One, where he stands uh, in the draft process and try to get a gauge on whether he could get drafted. And if so, how high. And then the second thing, in going through this process, uh, what I've shared with him is he needs to make a decision, is he ready to play? Because that, to me, that should be the most important thing. Because you make real money in the NBA if you play well and then you're a restricted or a free agent, restricted or not. That's where you make the real money. How does it affect your recruiting? Do you have to account for him? For oh, sure, going? but that's just the way it is. You know, we're full steam ahead with what we're doing in recruiting. Uh, and then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it if we have to address it as far as, I assume you're talking about scholarship limits. Yeah, yeah. so then we, we would address that when we had to come to it. He sounded, in some comments he made at ESPN a couple weeks ago, he sounded pretty, uh, fairly definitive that he was not just doing this. Well, that this. would be your opinion on how he sounded, not mine. <laughs> I can tell you, I talked to him, so. So I just expounded on a five-minute answer on the situation. I thought I was pretty clear no, with it. No, no, it seemed like some, I've had numerous saying, talks with him. I gave you all the answers. I don't, you know. That's fine. If you want to go back on, you know, th things other people write or say, I mean, it's not me. I can only tell you what, what I know and what I deal with. My job's to help him. Uh, and if it comes out that he hires an agent, then obviously then we would know. But, uh, you know, he, that wouldn't be in his best interest. He knows that. We, he would be throwing away leverage. You know, you have leverage if you don't hire an agent because then if teams want you, they need, they want you to put your name in because they want to draft you, then they have to let you know. So it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be strategically smart for him. For him. And again, for me, my job is to help him. That's all I care about with this. You know, whatever happen, has to happen with us with pausing, with scholarships, I mean, it's just... That's the way it goes nowadays. You know, a lot of people have had to deal with this uh, a lot more than our program has. And I've read about it, you know, like uh, trying to move up dates and deadlines and all that stuff. But uh, it's a good problem to have. That means you get good players.